the state says it has a strong case against the Tulsi twins. Tony Lee and Brandon Lee Tulsi are facing terrorism charges. The state presented pictures of the brothers wearing what it's claimed was suicide vests. Our reporter Karen Morn was in court today following those proceedings, as she has been for us all week. Hi there, Karen. How strong an argument did the state make today as to why they had brought this case to court? Well, you know, it's really a question of, it's very apparent that they have certain sources, certain Section 204 witnesses. There's an, another issue in terms of that one of those witnesses now turning around and saying he was coerced into making a statement. But it seems that the, the state's case is really a mesh of these 204 statements who claim to have direct dealings with these two and foreign intelligence. Um, they've also said, you know, we've gotten a great deal more insight in the last day into what the case is. But the state has also said that it found a document on uh, one of the twins' computers that is so sensitive that it will not reveal its contents uh, publicly and will only do so if the court requires it to. But interestingly enough, the, the new information that we have is that in May and in addition to July, there were two attempts by the, by the twins to go to Syria on the version of the state and going via Turkey. They were stopped from Turkish airlines the first time. And then the second time in July, they had planned to take a circuitous route on the version of the state from Mozambique through a number of other countries to get to um, Syria. They also say that there was payment made to um, through a bank account in South Africa. A payment was made by a known uh, Islamic State member to fund the first trip. And so we have now on the version of the state a concrete financial link between IS and these two. Um, they're also saying that, you know, they found when they've done it now a digital an analysis of a lot of the material that they found on the, on the twin, in the twins' home, we know that the twins are now challenging that search and seizure, but saying they found manuals um, on how to conduct terrorist attacks, uh, evade arrest or evade the authorities and to create poisons. They're saying that they also have a number of um, it appears intercepted co uh, uh, conversations or some kind of basis. We th that's where the espionage angle is coming in, where they're saying that foreign law enforcement or espionage authorities have basically indicated to them that Tony Lee Tulsi was discussing with a known IS, uh, IS person how he was going to get funding uh, so that he could effectively blow himself up. Um, so we have a great deal more insight into what the state is saying pushed it to, to lay the charges against these two. However, as has been the case the entire time, they were under surveillance for a year and three months. And we really don't know, Joe, just how serious they were about actually making good on what they appear to have been saying in, in this kind of space that the state's alleging they were, they were caught saying these things in. Well, why did that, that 204 witness you spoke about withdraw two weeks ago? Well, essentially what he said was that he was, you know, it's interesting because um, both the twins and this young man had converted to Islam. Um, but he's saying Ronaldo Smith and he, you know, named, handed in a letter to court today, basically saying, you know, I was arrested. I was told that I would be arrested, uh, you know, I would face charges. My wife would face charges. We would end up in jail, my brother. And I was just very, very scared. And I was told to make a statement and sign it. I wasn't ever given the opportunity to read it. And at no point did anyone warn me of my rights. They didn't say you have a right to remain silent. And I was just terrified. Um, and this is why I want the statement retracted. So essentially he's saying he was coerced. Of course, you know, we know from the, the documentation attached that the Hawks legal services are denying that. But, um, you know, he's adamant that, that he wasn't in any way, shape or form given the appropriate constitutional warnings about his own rights. And that's quite serious within the, the context of the court. Even though the state is now saying that this man is still a witness, they, um, you know, that they, they believe they did everything by the book and they continue to rely on his evidence in these applications. And we really don't have a defining line in terms of what his information was versus all these other things that the state are alleging. Thanks for keeping us up to date on all the developments in this case. Our specialist reporter Karen Morn following that Tulsi twin case for us.